This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So as we've looked at, tax relief is given on pension contributions up to the level of your relevant earnings for that tax year. Now, if your contributions exceed the annual allowance, including any allowances that might be brought forward, then there will be a charge. The reason for that, there's, I'll try and give you some sort of idea of why this was brought in. So when pensions were um, initially um, instigated, the idea behind it was that you would contribute into this pension for your retirement so that you wouldn't rely quite so much on state pension because the government knew that the state pension wasn't going to be sufficient to be able to cover everybody who was ready for retirement. So they asked you to pension contribute. Okay, let's do this. Yay, we're going to get lots of, we're going to put lots of money into the scheme. We're going to pay no tax. We're going to get full tax relief. Revenue went, oops. Okay, so we'll amend this and put in an annual allowance to stop you diverting all your income into the fund and paying no tax because they need you to pay tax. So they restricted the amount of contribution that you were going to get tax relief on. That was the first stage. Then people said, well, I'll just contribute and not have tax relief on everything. So the revenue went, oops, okay, maybe that's not a good idea. What can we in? So they brought rules in that says now, if you do that, if you contribute more than your annual allowance for this year or anything you've brought forward, we're going to tax you on it. So that's the reasoning behind this. If you exceed your annual allowance, which you can have tax relief on, then there's going to be what's known as an annual allowance charge. Okay. So excess contributions are taxed as if they were extra income. And they are taxed after dividends at the non-savings rates. So that is top slicing. And it will be added, this charge is added to your income tax liability. It doesn't appear in your income tax computation. It's added to your liability. So therefore, excess contributions suffer tax as follows. Those that fit into the unused basic rate band. 20%. Any remaining excess contributions that fit into the unused high rate band suffer tax at 40% and obviously additional rate then is at 45%. Now there's a really big illustration that we've put in here because these, I have to say, pensions are not the easiest thing in the world to understand and get your head around. So an illustration is better sometimes than an exam question or, or an example, because you get to look at both sides of the question and the answer, kind of figure out what's going on. So Vilia has trading profit assessment for 22-23 of 350,000, made a contribution into the pension scheme of 70,000 pounds. Vilia joined the pension scheme in 21-22, in which year he made gross pension contributions of 10,000, and had net income of 90. Work out the annual allowance charge that will arise in 22-23 and prepare an income tax computation showing his income tax liability for the year. Now I want to put a caveat on this at this point. This illustration is purely for illustrative purposes only. It's very, very unlikely that you will have to do a big question on the annual allowance charge and then put it into an income tax computation. It's not one of the big topics that is examined. Now, the annual allowance charge could come up um, as part of a question where you've got to work it out, but then it wouldn't then be that you've got to show it in the income tax li um, liability computation. Alternatively, they may give you the annual allowance charge and expect you to put it into the income tax liability computation so that you know where to put it. So 
You need to be able to be able to work out what it is and where to put it, but you're never going to get one that comes all together in the same question. Okay, it, there's too many other major topics that they need to examine. It, this is more likely to come up, this sort of thing, at the advanced level, where you're advising clients what they need to do um, to save income. So it was obviously contributing into a pension scheme will save them tax. So let's have a look at what the illustration shows us. So for 22-23, he's got relevant earnings 100%, 350%, gross, con gross contribution of 70 all gets tax relief. But is AAA, sorry, is AA, not is AAA, is AA <laughs> will be reduced to £4,000 because this is so high. Okay, do you remember the contribution, the adjusted income, less than 240 divided by 2? So the only AA annual allowance charge he's got, the, uh, the annual allowance he's got this year is 4,000, despite the fact that he's got sufficient earnings to be able to pay that contribution. Now, he was not a member of the scheme until 2122, and he will have no unused AA brought forward from earlier years. However, he does have unused AA from 2122 of 30,000. As his limit was 40,000 in full and he only used 10. So therefore he has 30,000 and 4,000 unused AA, which is then redu reduced from the contribution he's made. So the charge is the amount that he contributed less his annual allowance that he's got this year plus what he's got brought forward. So the charge is 36,000. So that's how you calculate that. Now that might come up as a multiple choice kind of question. You've got a relevant earnings, you've got a contribution, you've got what they did in the year before. What is the charge? All right, so that could come up as one multiple choice question, potentially. Now, as he contributed to the scheme a personal pension scheme, not an occupational scheme, his basic rate and high rate bands will be increased by the gross contribution. Okay, the gross contribution. So they will in, be upgraded from 37,700 to 107,700. So that's the basic rate. So he only pays basic rate on that income up to that. And then 220 which is 150 plus the 70. So that, that's the second thing we need to do. As pension contributions are made net of tax, the actual payment he made into the scheme was only 56,000. The balance would have been the tax. So let's have a look at his income tax computation. So there's his trade profit, which is his net income. He gets no personal allowance because it's way over the limit, okay? Never ignore it. Never ignore it. Put it in and explain why. And you'll see that there, the note one, that explains quite clearly, because it shows you know the rule. So his taxable income of 350,000, basic rate, we saw that above at 20%, higher rate, we saw that above, Additional rate, so that we've all done before, and that was in the chapter on income tax computation. And here's the charge, 36,000 at his top slice of 45%. So that's added to his tax liability, giving him a total income tax liability of 141,160. Now there is also a final allowance which is restricted, the lifetime allowance. So when you take your pension, you're allowed 25% of the value of the fund tax-free. Okay, 
The remainder, what you can do is you can either buy an annuity, which will then pay you a certain amount each month, each year, however it works, or you can draw down from your pension with drawing amounts each time. So that's how you redo, that's how you remove the funds. You have to be over 55. And obviously you would need to get a financial advisor to work out whether or not you've got enough in your fund to fund your uh, retirement and when you should be doing that. So in addition to the annual allowance, there is a lifetime allowance of that much. That's the maximum you can put in your fund. And again, if it exceeds this limit, you will be charged. Okay, <laughs> look at this, and you'll love this. These calculations are not within the syllabus. You don't have to worry about that. You just need to know what the amount is. Now, as I said, with pension funds, the things to remember, the different types and who can contribute, how much you can contribute, how much tax relief you're going to get on that using the annual allowance for this year and any previous years if you were in a pension fund. How you get relief, whether you get relief at source if it's occupational or whether you get relief by extending basic rate bands and higher rate bands. What happens if you contribute more than your annual allowance, how to deal with a tax charge and where to put it. And then just be aware of, you can take 25% of your fund out, what you can do with the rest, and then the maximum amount. Now, when you're happy with that, and you've taken the information in, if you could do practice question 17, that would be good.